G'day Bomber fans, as we know we recently added a new player to our list through the mid-season draft, uh, or, or we didn't, I, I'm actually filming this before the mid-season draft so I'm I'm not sure, uh, but there is more draft content coming for you because the 2024 National Draft is starting to really kick off with the arrival of the Under-18 NAB Championships. All the best young kids in the country playing each other, trying to impress scouts and recruiters to earn an AFL contract. It's good fun, uh, I'm a big nerd for it, and SNN just so happened to have a couple of father-son options and some really talented academy boys. So today I'm going to tell you how those guys are going, the guys linked to the SNN Football Club, uh, whether or not they can end up at Essendon. Quicker video today I reckon, so let's get into it. Also guys, before I do start, I am pretty nerdy when it comes to the draft and trade period. I know you guys like the trade update videos, but let me know down below what draft specific content you would like to see, whether this little Father Son Academy update is enough for you, or if you would like to know more about the draft crop. And also check out my other channel, AFL 101, because I do post monthly draft power rankings over there. Uh, although in saying that, I may or may not have forgotten to do one for the month uh, in May, but let's just get onto this video. All right, we're going to start with a couple of Father Son options that we have uh, for season 2024. The first is Noah Carousel the son of Blake Carousella, who is currently our VFL coach. Uh, the script is there. It could be written. Father and son coaching duo. Um, but I don't know if it's going to eventuate, unfortunately. Carousella is yet to really announce himself as a likely draftee. He's an outside footballer, high half forward or attacking wingman. Although his last couple of games, he has actually been playing in a defensive role in D50. And to be honest, I would say his two best games came from this little period. So that's something for him to uh, potentially build confidence from. But he has a long, long way to go if he wants to be taken in the draft. Because right now, he is unfortunately nowhere near. He's not really impacting games like those around him. He's flagging further behind those other similar wingmen or outside midfielders in the crop. And the cherry on top was him not being invited to the under-18 champs carnival, which is where you want to be as a draft hopeful. Most draftees featured for their state, so to not be selected, it's a big blow, especially if you're an outside runner. Players of those positions don't usually take too much time to grow into their role at this age, so his poor form is a further indicator that he's probably not AFL standard right now. He's been averaging under 10 disposals a game for the Geelong Falcons. He kicked just the one behind, yet to even reach 15 touches in a game, although his last match where he amassed 15 and uh, 14 and 5 rebounds was his most impressive, but if that's your best showing in a draft campaign, you're probably, you're probably not going to make it, unfortunately. That's the thing. He, he needs to stop playing good footy and start playing great footy, and until he does that, he will be a state-level player, I reckon. Uh, we'll see what happens in the second half of the year, though, but I'm, I'm going to say Noah Carousella probably won't be in the red and black, or any other colours. Alex Alessio now. His father is Stephen. Uh, Stephen Alessio, of course. Uh, the second of our father-son options and the, and the last of our father-son options. Uh, he inherited his father's height. He is a two-meter ruck. Uh, it's always tough to read rucks. You never really know how good they are unless uh, they're higher up in the draft. And Alessio is most certainly not a high draft pick. In fact, I'm calling it early. He's not going to be taken by anyone this draft, including Essendon. He's either a late bloomer or not AFL standard. And either way, I doubt any club would take a risk on him. He's yet to really show anything, to be honest. He's acting as the second or third ruck most weeks and having minimal impact when resting in different positions as well. He was actually recently dropped from the team at the quarter cannons so it's not gonna it's not going well for young Alex he's played four games so far for the cannons all, all very similar in terms of output no outliers anywhere so that out average of 5.8 touches and 5.5 hit outs kind of tells you all you need to know he's really struggling to get to that next level and even that next level is probably still a long way off the good rucks of the crop he's another one rapidly falling behind the rest I would obviously love for me to be proven wrong it's hard not to romanticize the father-son rule but I really don't think he's going to be good enough for AFL footy much like uh, Carousella that is no Noah Carousella. Blake Carousella was very good at AFL footy. This is where it gets fun. Onto the academy kids. These guys are all currently playing for our tied talent league team, the Colder Cannons. So if you want to keep up to date, that's the team to follow. Jaden Newen. Now this is a really interesting one. Uh, NGA boys obviously cannot have bids matched on them within the first 40 picks of the national draft, but I struggle to know exactly where Newen sits right now. He's a small rebounding halfback flanker. If I had to care him pair into anyone we're familiar with, I'd say Archie Roberts. Newen is quick. He's usually pretty good by foot. He's primarily used as a rebounder. He isn't the type of guy to lock down on opposition best small forward. Uh, he would be used in attacking ways, much like what we see with Roberts. In fact, I reckon he could even grow into a wingman if required, which is good, like Roberts has. Uh, it's always good to have versatility in a player. Nguyen has really grown uh, from the second half of last year. He had a monster game as an underager in the Talent League last year, amassing 35 disposals. And since then, he's grown in confidence. He was recently added to the AFL Academy squad to take on Footscray, I think it was, uh, I believe, in, in an exhibition match it was, um, which means 
he has played against senior VFL bodies. That's already a tick for his development. He looked okay in that game as well. Uh, now, he was only added because of an injury to a player of his position, but it tells you that he's currently in the top five or ten general defenders in this draft. It's tough to know if that means he'll be taken before pick 40 or not because this is a, a draft that's very midfield heavy. Time will tell, but the early signs for Newen are quite good. I've liked what I've seen. He isn't a player we desperately need a position. I won't be cut if we miss out on him because we did just draft Roberts, who I think will turn out to be a better player, but it would be hard to say no if another club bids on him outside the top 40. I should quickly say, though, his form in the last few weeks has been less than excellent. His highest disposal tally in his last three games is 15, so that could help decrease his value, his stocks, and give us an option if we wanted to take him later in the draft, but I expect him to be performing well again as we approach champs. He has been added to the Vic Metro squad. Khalil Kakor is a lesser-known academy boy. He is a small forward, very small forward, in fact. He's actually apparently 167 centimetres, which, if true, is just wild. That would make him smaller than Caleb Daniel, so odds are already against him. Uh, he was best and fairest for his district football league uh, club last year, where he was injured at the start of the year this year, so has only really appeared for the Colter Cannons uh, alongside uh, Nguyen in two or three games. He hasn't really done much yet uh, in those matches, although I should say I'm yet to actually watch or see any highlights properly, so... I really can't tell you too much about him right now, and I didn't even know he existed until uh, I was making a video earlier in the year. But judging off stats and the lack of information that is going around about him, I would say he is most likely not going to be picked up in the draft. Uh, he has played three games so far this year, his best being against the Suns Academy when he kicked a goal from 10 touches while also notching up a few inside 50s as well. I'll let you know if anything changes, but by this stage of the year, if, if you're going to be drafted, there should be at least some traction, and there is nothing here on Kakor. All right, the big one, Isaac Kako. He is the name that most Essendon fans will already be familiar with in regards to our 2024 draft. He is an academy product who is widely regarded as a potential late first round or early second round option, which is of course not ideal for Essendon as we will only be able to match rival bids if he falls outside the top 40, and that is currently looking quite unlikely unfortunately for us. But there's every chance that the club actually acts early within the open market and selects him anyway, seeing as he is a really promising player in a position that we are currently lacking in. Kako is an energetic small forward. He is very quick. He is very lively. He is currently tearing up four cold cannons, kicking goals for fun. Uh, he pushes up in the midfield a bit uh, in his age group, but he will play closer to the sticks for whatever team he is drafted to, hopefully Essendon. He's kicked 14 goals from his seven games, 17 behinds as well. And that's actually, honestly, that's a great thing about Kako is that he's he never has quiet games. He sometimes lacks polish, 17 behinds, obviously. In fact, he recently had a game where he kicked one goal and five behinds. Uh, but he is at least always finding himself involved, which I love. He He's, he's not inconsistent. Um, he's not polished and inconsistent like small four often are. He is consistent, but not polished. Uh, but the fact he is so involved um, consistently is promising enough for me. He takes the game on and tries to inject energy into the forward line, which of course makes him very fun to watch. He would definitely be a bit of a cult hero at Essendon as well, with the long locks and the hard ad at the ball attitude. He applies great pressure as well, I should say. He is, as of, of right now, one of the very best small forwards in the draft crop, which is great, uh, but also not great for us, because it means any club can take him, even though he is tied to our NGA. He will play his first champs game at the same time as Nguyen, who I spoke of before, uh, June 9th against the Allies. So if you want to be up to date with our potential draftees, I'll keep an eye on that. Uh, the AFL website shows all those games. But that is all. A very quick update of our potential father-son and academy players. Let me know what you think down below. Are you keen to see any of these players don the red and black? Anyone in particular you want to see join the club? Uh, let me know down below. But that is all. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and go Bombers.